Welcome to this quick overview of the latest version of the Cloud Foundry Manifest Editing Tools. Now normally the Pivotal Tools team produces Eclipse plugins, but this is something a little different. Uh, we're trying to follow Microsoft's Language Server Protocol. So this is, the aim is that you implement support for the language once behind the protocol, and then a number of editors can pick up your support just by supporting the protocol. So the aim is I wouldn't need to produce a new implementation of a language support for Eclipse and then for Sublime and then for Atom. I implement it once behind the protocol and they can all speak the protocol and pick it up. So what does that look like in practice? Well, let's clone a getting started guide from Spring. And then let's look at opening an editor on that. So this is Visual Studio Code. It is not Visual Studio, that's a different thing. Visual Studio Code is still by Microsoft, but it's more of a lightweight editor experience like a Sublime or an Atom. And I picked this one because this it's a Microsoft protocol and Visual Studio Code is kind of the de facto implementation of that. Other editors do support it, like uh, Eclipse has support and I think Atom has some early support. And other editors have feature requests against them to add support. So I have here a Spring project with a manifest.yaml suitable for publishing to Cloud Foundry. But you'll see I get no, apart from some vague syntax highlighting, I get no support in here. I don't get documentation on hovers. There is some content assist, but it's kind of nonsense. It's not contextually aware, really. So uh, it's suggesting to me 256M because these are all words it's just seen in the file and thinks I might want to use them. But that's not a sensible key to use. So let's change that. Let's jump into the VS Code Marketplace and look for manifest support. And we see there is one here. It gives you loads of information on what it can do for you, but I'm going to show you all that. So let's just install it and play with it. So quickly installed, need a quick reload to activate the extension. And what's changed? Um, well, now when I do a hover, I get uh, documentation. This is pulled from the Cloud Foundry docs, docs and put into the extension. And so you'll see that name is expected to be a string. Here's an example of its usage. Uh, memory expected to be a number followed by one of these specifiers MMB GGB and if I violate those rules you'll see I get red squigglies indicating there's a problem and on hover I get detailed information it doesn't end with the expected unit of memory I can fix that up and the error goes away I get content assist on sensible keys at this point in my uh, file uh, I can say pick the disk quota, content system a value for that. You see I can control space my way into developing a correct manifest. We also support uh, dynamic values for content assist. What on earth does that mean? Uh, suppose I wanted to specify a build pack. Now when I press control space here, the values it wants to suggest kind of depend on what I'm connected to. Maybe as a developer, I spend all day connected to the same target. That's where I always push my apps. So wouldn't it be nice if it could suggest values based on the target I'm connected to? And you'll see that you get a clue here when you try to get content assist that we could maybe log in with a CFCLI. So let's try that. So I'm going to log into PWS. My framework and runtimes org and STS development space. Let's flip back to VS Code and try that content assist again. Taking a little longer to answer now, but you'll see it is now suggesting things based on the target I was connected to. So I know there's a Java build pack up there, so I can pick it. Yeah, so that's based on my live connection. If I switch my connection to another target, it would then offer different content assist results. This also works for services. So it's going to have a look what's available. There's a MongoDB available. Let's pick that one. And if I just type in some random rubbish for a service name, you'll see I get an indication that there's a problem in this manifest. That service isn't available on that target. Some of you may have also noticed when I switched that CF login on and logged into a real target, this suddenly got underlined. 
this domain. And that is because it's now able to check that value because it can query the domains available on the server. So it says guides.spring.io is not a known domain at that target. There are these that are available, so I can replace that with one that I know will work. What else can we do? Um, the stack, that is also dynamically determinable. You'll see this stack is available at this org and space, so I can choose that. Uh, roots. I could specify a root. Oh, but you see now it's an underlined part of this, the domain part, indicating there is a problem, as we expect. That isn't the supported domain up there, so I can get content assist and flip that to something that will work. We've still got errors though, what's going on here? Well it's indicating that the roots is clashing with these other two keys. Now this host property cannot coexist with the property roots. So if I'm going to use roots, I have to switch off host and domain. So you get that level of validation. Uh, what else can we do? Um, there used to be a a value for health check type um, that's now been deprecated. The current values that we support are HTTP, port, and process, but there used to be one called none. So I can enter none here. Uh, imagine I've loaded up an old manifest file, and I'm talking to a new Cloud Foundry. You'll see that it's saying um, the value of non is deprecated in favor of process. So I could content assist there to fix that up, but I can also use this quick fix, which is provided be by the support behind this language server protocol. So accept that quick fix and it'll flip it over to process, and now mine's all fixed up. So that is all the latest features that we have in the uh, manifest editing for Cloud Foundry. I hope you give it a try. Thank you for watching.